Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of this series on making new rods for my 1 inch scale Pacific. In the last video we finished the first operation on the front and rear side rods and the main rods. In this video we'll be fluting, profiling, and assembling the rods and lastly installing them on the locomotive. So be sure to stick around until the end for the final result. Before I start on the next operation, I need to make the knuckle pin that joins the front and rear side rods so I can check the fit. So let's go to the lathe. I decided on 4140 steel for the pin, which should hold up very well. The first tool will face in rough turn. And the second tool will perform a slow finish pass and bring the outer diameters to dimension. Then the threading tool will single point turn a 7 30 seconds 40 pitch thread. The parting tool will groove a relief behind the part to make the live tool's job a little easier. The live tool will then cut the flats with a roughing and finishing pass. The quarter inch end mill is just big enough to do the job. A little deburring and part off. It took two or three tries before a good pin came off. This is the second good one off the lathe and I made one extra. Now onto boring and fluting. First we'll pre-drill the rods, then bore the bearing hub just shy of the final dimension. The square that keys the pin is roughed with a 3 16th end mill, and an 8th inch end mill plunges the corners before finishing to size. Fits the pin beautifully, so let's continue. A quarter inch end mill bores the other side of this rod to dimension and finishes the bearing hub diameter. Now onto the flutes. The most important thing when 3D milling, especially in harder materials, is to have a really good reference program. First we'll remove most of the material from the flutes with a 3 16 end mill. Then an 8th inch end mill will come in and rough out some of the tighter areas the 3 16 end mill couldn't reach. The 3 30 seconds ball end mill will finish the flutes. The first pass runs very slow at 5 inches per minute since it's taking a heavier pass than the subsequent passes. Once the first pass is finished we'll bump it up to 80 inches a minute. This takes a long time so we'll skip ahead to the end. Now the fluting process will be repeated on the other side off camera. Now we'll take a look at the main rod. Process is pretty much the same, first pre-drilling the bearing locations. A half inch end mill will open up a bigger starting area for the slot on this end. And then we'll bore the hole on the other side. A 5 30 seconds drill is used to pre-drill the corners of the pocket on the main bearing end to reduce chatter with the finishing end mill. A 2D adaptive tool path is used to rough out the pocket and then a 3 16 end mill will finish the pocket. Five thirty seconds end mill is run around the profile to clean everything the three sixteenths end mill may have missed. And now we repeat the fluting process. I wouldn't show this again, but the roughing tool broke, making some cool fireworks behind the coolant. Luckily the three sixteenths end mill was nearly at the end of its path, and the eighth inch tool survived to clean up some of what it missed. Now this is where the rods are at. Board and fluted main rods, front side rods, and rear side rods, all ready for profiling. First we need to drill and tap two holes into an aluminum block to hold the rods. I'm using a 3816 tap. This will provide plenty of holding force for the profiling operation. I made some bushings to take up the extra space so the bolts hold the rod in place. These need to be really tight or the end mill will chatter and create a horrible finish 
I'm being very cautious before letting the end mill run free to make sure the tool holder won't hit the top of the bolt. Looks like it's clear, so we'll let the roughing operation do its job. This will leave about five thousandths for a finishing pass with the second 3 8 end mill. This is one of those very rare situations where increasing the RPM reduces chatter. The slower RPM was pulling up hard on the middle of the rod where it's not as well supported, so increasing the RPM reduced that upward force on the part, reducing vibration. The finishing pass runs at about 10 inches a minute at 3200 RPM, which with the 5 flute cutter leaves a very nice finish. I still need to drill and tap the 1032 holes for the fake grease fittings, which I forgot to film, but these are nearly done. The procedure for the main and front rods is essentially the same. I had to place a 1 seconds washer under one end since it's 1 16th of an inch narrower where it enters the crosshead. Once again, getting these snug as tight as I'm comfortable going. As you can hear, when we start the roughing operation, it's only cutting on one side. This is a good example of why I left 50 thousandths on both sides of the rods, but eventually it does start to cut, so I know I have plenty of room for this profile to fully clean up. Now we're cutting our finishing pass. And the main rod is done. Now to make the main rod bearings. I had a piece of 954 aluminum bronze that was the perfect size, so that's what I'll be using. I'm placing material for both bearings in the vise and we'll set up two separate work offsets. I'll use the indicator to locate two independent zeros and input them to the mill's G54 and G55 locations. This way I can simply have Fusion 360 repeat all operations at these two offsets and I won't have to think about how far apart these two pieces are from each other. The half inch end mill will face the blocks and remove the bulk of the outside material. This 9 drill will rough out the bearing hole and leave some room for finishing. The final dimension of the bore will be 5 8 To make the slot perfectly centered with the bearing hole, I'm using a key cutter to profile the middle. Key cutters are almost never the diameter they say they are, so it's critical to measure them as carefully as possible. The program will cut the bearing 2 thousandths smaller than the main rod opening. Everything after this is pretty much cosmetic. Apparently I forgot to film the cutoff operation, but they were cut off using the same key cutter as the rods after the first operation. And it measures right where I want it. Now let's flip the bearing over. Since the bearing is not symmetrical, I had to make these brass pieces to clamp the bearing on the slotted surface. Being really careful with loading these into the parallels, making sure everything is clean so that they sit perfectly flat. I'll be using the Heimer probe to get my location close and then dial it in with the test indicator. Even though this is only cosmetic, this side will be visible, so I'd like it to be as centered as I can get it. Quick facing operation. I'm using a quarter inch end mill with a 30 thousandths corner radius to 3D mill the irregular radius on the outside of the bearing. It's not the fastest way to do it, but when making only two, the extra time isn't a big deal and it's a little easier to program this way. There's a lot of wasted moves here, but again, we're only making two of them. And there's the finished bearing. Now it's time to assemble the rods. I made the bearings a slip fit so I can get them in by hand. 
It doesn't really matter if they can rotate a little bit inside the bearing hub. And I made a bushing for the knuckle pin as well. And now we'll thread in the fake grease fittings. Sorry I didn't show how I made these, but I made them before I decided to film the process of making these rods. Now we'll repeat this process on the rear rod. And we'll go back and tighten the grease fittings. Slightly more efficient to tighten them all at the same time. And now we'll put in the knuckle pin. Now you can see how the square head knuckle pin works. The pin fits very nicely, but it can be tricky to get it in because it has to be perfectly aligned with both the square and the bore on the opposite side. This one gave me a bit of trouble, but once I got it lined up, it snapped right in. I'm very happy with the amount of lateral play between these rods. Uh, it helps tremendously with binding when the engine is going around curves. Now we'll repeat this process for the rods on the other side of the engine. Getting the bearings in and the fake grease fittings. Here's a closer look at the grease fitting. Purely cosmetic, but it makes a big difference to the look of the rod. The knuckle pin on this side gave me a lot less grief. Snapped right in. Now onto the main rods. They'll also receive a grease fitting. Here you can see how the bearing slips in, coming in from one side and sliding to the back. I made the wedges off camera, but they were simply profiled and cut off with the key cutter. The small wedge slips in and rests in the bearing slot. And then the large wedge gets inserted. It seems a little tight, but there is still room for it to get wedged in and do its job. And here's an overall look at how it all goes together. By tightening the 440 thread, the larger wedge gets pulled down and applies pressure to the bearing to secure it in place. Now let's put them on the engine. The first side will be easy. Even if I got the rod dimensions wrong, I'll be able to get the rods on. The moment of truth is on the second side. If the dimensions are off, even a little bit, they won't fit, or they may bind somewhere in the wheel's rotation. I have to move the drivers around a little bit to get the bearings lined up with the crank pins. Once I get them lined up, everything slips right on. It can still be a little easier to get them on by rotating the wheels, even though the spacing is now kind of set by the other side. This feels pretty good. It's a little hard to turn, but I think that's because the engine's weight is on the rollers. And you will also feel some resistance as the counterweights are being raised and lowered. I'll need to make new crossheads before I can fully install the main rods, but let's see how they look on the engine anyway. And the final result. I personally think they look much better. I hope you agree. Next time we'll be diving into the valve gear, so be sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss it. I'll see you next time.